This is a Lucy email security video. Cyber criminals are not going after company systems anymore. They are going after a company's users. It is important to have security best practices in place, especially practices that include email conduct. When you understand the most common email threats, you're better able to set up protections and policies to help ensure the security of your business. Common threats to email systems include the following. Increasingly, attackers are taking advantage of email to deliver a variety of attacks to organizations through the use of malware or malicious software that include viruses, worms, Trojan horses, and spyware. Unsolicited commercial email, commonly referred to as spam, is the sending of unwanted bulk commercial email messages. Related to spam is phishing, which refers to the use of deceptive computer-based means to trick individuals into responding to the email, clicking on some file, or disclosing sensitive information. Spear phishing is a highly specialized phishing attack that targets a specific individual or small group of individuals to collect information in order to gain access to computer systems, networks, and data. Now, let's talk about social engineering. Rather than hack into a system, an attacker can use email to gather sensitive information from an organization's users or get users to perform actions that further an attack. A common social engineering attack is email spoofing, in which one person or program successfully masquerades as another by falsifying the sender information shown in emails to hide the true origin. Unintentional acts by authorized users. Not all security threats are intentional. Authorized users may inadvertently send proprietary or other sensitive information via email, exposing the organization to embarrassment or legal action. So, how to protect from the common threats? Avoid using a personal account for transmitting company data. Make sure that you don't risk your company's security and your job by transmitting sensitive company data via your own personal computer or email address. This includes using your personal email account on the job as well as sending company documents to your personal account. Your company has a right to see everything you send and receive on your professional account. Assume that all your emails are monitored and refrain from sending anything you wouldn't be comfortable with your boss seeing. Messages that try to persuade you to send your password or credit card number are forged, even if they appear to be from your bank or system administrator. Log off after accessing corporate resources from a public device. Always remember to log off when you finish with secure websites. If you do not, the next person to use the computer will have access to your personal information. When you put a person's email addresses in the BBC, Rather than the CC window, none of the recipients can see the addresses of the other email recipients. New email users often rely too much on the two because it is the default way of sending emails. That is fine as long as you are writing to just one person. But if you are sending mail out to a diverse group of people, confusing BCC and CC raises serious privacy and security concerns. It takes just one spammer to get a hold of the email and immediately everyone on your email list gets spammed. Sometimes, the mistake isn't in deciding between CC and BC, but between hitting Reply All instead of Reply. When you hit Reply All, your email message is sent to everyone included on the original email, and if you didn't intend to include them, the information might be bad from both a security and personal humiliation perspective. Forwarding emails can be a great way to quickly bring someone up to speed on a subject without having to write up a summary email. But if you aren't careful, forwarding emails can create a significant security threat for yourself and the earlier recipients of the email. As an email is forwarded, the recipients of the mail until that point in time are automatically listed in the body of the email. As the chain keeps moving forward, more and more recipient IDs are placed on the list. Just because you delete an email message from your inbox and the sender deletes it from their sent inbox does not mean that the email is lost forever. In fact, messages that are deleted often still exist in backup folders on remote servers for years and can be retrieved by skilled professionals. So, start to think of what you write in an email as a permanent document. Be careful about what you put into writing because it can come back to haunt you many years after you assumed it was gone forever. Don't click on suspect links. 
if a link looks hidden, or if it comes from an unfamiliar source, don't click it. It might take you to an unspecified location and possibly inject malware into your machine when you attempt to download the page. Be aware of any discrepancies in links that look mostly, but not entirely familiar, such as Amazon instead of Amazon, and any shortened links. It is important to be aware of any emails received that come from unknown senders. Each email should be treated with caution. It is a best practice to avoid opening any attachments from unknown senders, especially if they seem peculiar or out of context. These types of emails could be malicious. Spammers use a wide variety of clever titles to get you to open emails which they fill with all sorts of bad things. New email users often make the mistake of opening these emails. While never opening a phishing email is the best way to secure your computer, even the most experienced email user will occasionally accidentally open up a phishing email. At this point, the key to limiting your damage is recognizing the phishing email for what it is. Whatever form the phishing attempt takes, the goal is to fool you into entering your information into something which appears to be safe and secure, but in fact is just a dummy site set up by the scammer. Assuming you have already opened a phishing email, do not reply or click on the link in the email. If you want to verify the message, manually type in the URL of the company into your browser instead of clicking on the embedded link. A common technique used by spammers is to send out thousands of fake newsletters from organizations with an unsubscribe link on the bottom of the newsletter. Email users who then enter their email into the supposed unsubscribe list are then sent loads of spam. So if you don't specifically remember subscribing to the newsletter, you are better off just blacklisting the email address. Most new internet users are very careful when it comes to emails from senders they don't recognize. But when a friend sends an email, all caution goes out the window, as they just assume it is safe because they know that the sender wouldn't intend to hurt them. The truth is, an email from a friend's ID is just as likely to contain a virus or malware as a stranger's. The reason is that most malware is circulated by people who have no idea they are sending it, because hackers are using their computer. Malicious spam could even come from an email address spoofed, manipulated, to appear as if it is from someone within your organization. But one click of the mouse to open an infected Word document or PDF, and your PC may be infected. Often, these emails are disguised as shipping confirmation notices, alarming notices from banks, tantalizing photos, mortgage scams, fake news alerts, and more. Anything to raise our curiosity and get us to open an email and click an attachment or link that only leads to trouble. Keep your data safe and be cautious.